Welcome to my channel. Today's our last full day here at the beach. We're staying on the Bolivar Peninsula at an RV park called At the Beach RV Park. And tomorrow we're gonna to be leaving. It's gonna be three weeks since we got here. It's gonna be so bittersweet because it's just been so, so, so nice here. But I figured I'd vlog today, kind of share the RV park a little bit, our stay, like summarize our stay, things like that. So just for mainly for memory, I think it'll be really nice to look, look back on and for anybody who's interested. Uh, we've never, been to the Bolivar Peninsula, so I'll try to share some information on that. Um, but yeah, first things first, I'm going to go for my walk. I've been loving going for walks in the morning on the beach. It's just been so nice. I'm going to miss it. I try to get like 10,000 steps in every day, so getting a walk in in the morning definitely helps to reach that goal. So I'm going to grab my camera. It is pretty noisy out there. I've tried filming a few times, and then I look back at the footage. Sorry, I'm trying to unscrew my iPod tripod. Um, I look back at the footage and it's like super, um, there's just a lot of background noise, the waves, the wind. I'm filming on my Sony ZV-1 and it has like this little muff on top that it comes with. So hopefully that will help cancel out some of the noise, but it won't cancel out all of it. So I'm sorry if the audio is going to be not that great. Just keep in mind, it's the sound of the ocean and the waves you guys are hearing. We are living full time in the RV for those of you that are new. This is our master bedroom here. I wanted to show you guys the views from our master bedroom. I think we are spot five. He has like the beachfront spot and then we're the next in line. And then you have like a few more spots going behind us and then a few on the other side. I'll show you guys outside. But this is the view from our window when we don't have neighbors you get like a direct view of the beach and it's just so nice but even like this it's just so incredible at nighttime you can hear the sounds of the ocean so therapeutic and so amazing but you're literally like steps from the beach on this park and I'll talk about all that in a little bit but I wanted to show you guys the views from our bedroom kids are doing homeschool in there and this is our we have a toy hauler so this is like the garage portion but I wanted to show you guys the views from here this is the kids bedroom essentially we have the two bunk bed situation up top and this is their view here the sun came out today it is cloudy but when the sun's out it's so nice it's the perfect weather to enjoy the beach in my opinion because it's like 70s it doesn't feel too hot and it, the water is still cold though my kids did swim in it a couple of days on the days where it's like really sunny but for the most part it's still you know a little colder than it would be in the summertime but you're literally right on the beach we love this rv park because although it doesn't have like the fancy schmancy um pads and everything each site does come with a picnic table which i'll show you guys when i go outside it's full hookup so water electric and sewer so essentially from that corner there to that corner in front of this rv park this rv is the RV park and then it goes back that way. So I think there's like 12 spots total. And like I said, it has full hookups and then every spot has a picnic table. Hopefully the audio isn't too bad with the little muff on, but here's our spot here. And again, I think we're spot five. And this is kind of an overview of what the camp campground looks like. So you have a few spots on that side, parallel to the beach and then a few spots here. And then I'm not sure what that building is. Honestly, we've never gone inside or used it. But I, we just love how it feels so like organic, it feels like you're on the beach. It's not too busy this time of year and it seems very secluded. It has like that amazing beachy feel. So I would highly recommend it, but in the end of the day, I guess it just depends what you guys, what everyone's looking for. Everybody's kind of looking for something different. To enter the park, you're going to come off the highway there in the front. That's like the main highway that goes all the way uh, across the peninsula. And then you just pull in and all the, the park is on this side right here. I'm pretty sure he owns this land here because he owns that yellow building. The owner of the RV park owns that yellow building there, which fun fact, that was if you Google uh, Hurricane Ike 2008 Bolivar Peninsula, you'll see an image of a single house standing on the entire peninsula. And that's the house in that photo. Pretty crazy. But I think that's also the reason why there's like a lot of debris and stuff on the beach like sometimes you'll find cords sticking out wires random tubes like the other day I was walking and I hit my leg on something actually hurt pretty pretty bad so you do have to kind of watch where you're going but you're literally steps from the beach and it's just so incredible I feel like it doesn't really get better than this so again we've been really loving it you can do campfires the only thing is there's a lot of mosquitoes here 
So there's the park right there. And this is what the beach looks like. You do get like seaweed, a lot of shells. The other day I saw a stingray. Um, we saw a lot of Portuguese man o' wars wash up one time. So pretty interesting beach, I would say. It's not like the cleanest, cleanest, but it's still the ocean. It's very, it's just amazing, you know, so. And then here you can see that the houses, they're not like all one after the other. They're kind of spaced out and the whole location is like pretty discreet. So depending on the time of year you go, your experience might be different, but we've absolutely loved it. Like I keep saying, we just had such a great time and we're gonna miss it so much. So I'm gonna go for my walk now. The kids are gonna do some homeschool and then we're gonna enjoy some time on the beach. Here's what the park looks like from a distance. It's right there. And then just a view of the beach in general. So you guys can get an idea if you ever do, anyone does decide to come here. Kind of like a visual of what to expect. Came across a couple of the Portuguese man o' wars I was talking about. These guys, they look like little blue balloons. They're not exactly jellyfish, but I think they're in the same family or something of the sorts. Uh, they say not to touch them though, because they can still sting you a few like weeks into being washed up. We're enjoying our last full day here at the beach. The kids are playing. We just had lunch, have my coffee here, my book. I've been loving coming out when the sun comes out. It's like the perfect weather to enjoy the beach. It's not too hot. You don't feel like you're, um, you know, melting. When we first came here, it was colder. We were in hats and like light jackets, so it was colder. This was like towards the end of February and then it warmed up a bit, but it still wasn't like warm enough where we were out tanning in bathing suits because the sun wasn't really out. And then I would say towards the end of the second week, that's when it got like really, really warm. And when the sun came out, it was just like perfect weather to just lay out. You just, you do need sunscreen, especially like if you're like us, we're from New York and then we have Eastern Mama, European roots. You know what? We found 73 blue jellyfish. Oh wow, yeah, there's a lot of them on. 73, they're some called, of them were caught. They're called Portuguese man o' wars. Good morning. It's the next morning and it's our last morning here. Didn't wake up to watch the sunrise. I did wake up to watch it a few times. It is so beautiful. It was very cloudy this morning, um, so we all just kind of slept in. I mean, look at that. The sun is coming out from the clouds, peeking through the clouds. So, such, such beautiful views here at this park. We absolutely love it, but we're gonna be packing up today since it is our last day. Filmed a few segments last night, but it was in low lighting, so the quality was really bad, and I don't know why this camera in low lighting sometimes it's kind of I even like reset the settings, but anyway, that's a story in and of itself. I wanted to share about like the peninsula, the ferry. My husband went to the grocery store yesterday to pick up some things before we head to our next location. And I wanted to say that there is only one main grocery store. I think they have like a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General or something of the sorts. And then, um, you know, little things here and there, but as for like one big grocery store, like they don't have Walmart, Aldi you know, whatever people shop at, the like Kroger's or whatever. They just have the big store, they call it. And it does have like your fruits, your vegetables, milk, bread, mayo, whatever you need, condiments. It has like a apparel section, beach stuff. And then it has like a hardware section, hot food section. So it's like an all-in-one. It does have kind of everything that you need. It is a little bit pricier. I will say pricier than Walmart. So keep that in mind. So when we went to Galveston Island, we had to cross the ferry. I'll tell you guys about that. We ended up just like shopping at Walmart there because we're like, there's a Walmart here. Let's shop at Walmart while we're there. And then we crossed the ferry with our groceries. They also have a Kroger. Galveston definitely has way more. So this is Bolivar Peninsula. And I would say it's a lot more secluded. Here, let me put my camera down. Actually, let me make myself a coffee because I just woke up, I brushed my teeth. Um, Eloise is awake, but the other ones are sleeping. So I'm gonna make myself a coffee and then kind of like share about everything that I wanted to share about. So sad to be leaving though. Ugh. I wish I could body it up and like remember this <laughs> or share it in video form. It's so nice. So nice. I'm gonna take a little walk with Josiah. Just like right next to our RV, nothing crazy. I was gonna go for one last walk like I usually do, but we have so much to pack up since we've been here for a few weeks. So 
Somebody left their shells. There's like random stuff you'll find here and there, like an applesauce cup right there. You gonna miss the beach, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Decided to sit down and enjoy the sound of the ocean and the sunrise, the feeling of the sun, the morning sun on your skin. Um, but as I was saying, I was talking about the one store, how there's only one store. They do have an Amazon hub Mom, locker. I my skin right here. Oh, it's because you scratched it off. They do have an Amazon hub locker on the side of that store, so if you want to order anything. Although, my husband said people order packages to the campground. You just got to say what spot you're at. Um, you probably have to talk to the owner about that, figure it out. Uh, there's also no laundry. <laughs> So that was the thing. Sid, the owner, was so kind. He, own, rents the yellow, he owns the yellow house and rents it. So there's somebody who was renting it the first week. And um, my husband was asking him about laundry. And he was like, oh, you can just use the laundry in the rental property that he owns. So we used it. We didn't want to ask him constantly. So we didn't ask him past that. My husband ended up driving to Willie, which is like around the reserve, wildlife reserve, that way. So Willie's like that way and far back. And then Cat, uh, Crystal Beach in the... Galveston Island is that way like it gets busier as you go towards the port and it gets a lot quieter and um, less houses and homes things like that towards the other side I would say and the RV park is more towards like the wildlife refuge so Willie does have like some grocery stores and it also has laundry so we did our laundry there and then this next spot we're gonna go to today we're just gonna it should have laundry on site so just something to keep in mind if anybody wants to start a business on uh, Bolivar Peninsula, I would highly recommend a laundromat. Could probably make bank because they're, I mean, uh, other RV campgrounds like Margaritaville. Margaritaville is like a fancy schmancy uh, camp uh, RV resort, like down there. You literally feel like you're a resort in, Me in Mexico. We actually walked it because we wanted to stay there um, after this, but we didn't because they, their monthly rates are a lot cheaper, but their monthly rate didn't start from April 1st. So we didn't, we couldn't just go there in the middle of March and do like a monthly rate. So we ended up not choosing that place, but it is gorgeous, beautiful, definitely resort feel, but it's far from the beach. It's so much farther than this. So we came back home to this RV park and we're like, that one was nice, but this is just, this one's like such a different feel. So it depends on what you're looking for. Like if you want the resort feel, Margaritaville is great. They have Palapas, Fun and Sun. They have a few of them and those do have like laundry baths on site. Um, but this one's like right on the ocean. So if he could get a laundromat going, I think that'd be pretty nice. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm trying to think of like what else. But if you're here, I, we would recommend visiting Galveston. Galveston has a ton to do. You have to cross the ferry, you don't have to, but you can cross the ferry to get there, to cross the channel. They do allow vehicles, RVs. I think we're actually gonna be taking it today our RV on there to get out. I will just say keep in mind, or you can go like around. Going around takes about a little under two hours, basically two hours, with traffic might be more or less, I don't know. The ferry can take two hours or more, it depends. So the first time we went, it was a Sunday, it was like lunchtime, we decided to take the ferry. We got checked, passed in to get into the line. They make sure they don't have any like gas cans and then you just wait in line and then they have like several lines and then they have two lines on the side for medical workers or anybody with a pass and those lines always go first so the first time we went our line didn't even budge for like two plus hours so we're like forget it we were like basically last in line we turned around and went back home and we tried again i think on a tuesday and this time we went a little bit earlier i think it was like 10 we still waited about an hour or more a little over an hour but we finally got through, and it's a fun experience. Once the car is parked and the ferry departs, you can um, get off the ferry. Get off the ferry. You cannot, you will get fined if you jump off the ferry. You can get out of your vehicle and go up top and um, like walk around there, it's really cool. It's a short ride, and they say that sometimes you can see dolphins, but we haven't, you know, we didn't see any. We went on more of like a hazier day. So if you want clear skies, then you'd have to go on like a morning that's more clear or whenever you go. But it's a fun experience that it takes you to Galveston. And then on the way back, we got really lucky. Like as soon as we got in line, our line was the one to go. So there's like no rhyme or reason with how they do things, I guess. I don't know. I guess it was just like luck of the draw. But Galveston has a ton to do. They have like the beach section. They have the historical section. We went to the railroad museum. They have the Moody Garden section, which was really nice. We wanted to go there, but it closes at four. So by the time we were done with the railroad museum, 
and lunch. It was already closed, but we did still explore it. I did a vlog of Galveston, but it was I watched it back and it just seemed so boring, so I just did I'm not gonna post it. Um, and then we they have like the beach section. So the really nice thing about the whole strip of the beach is that you have the road or you have the beach and then the road is right after the beach. So there's like no buildings, no homes. So you have the beach and then it's like the highway, the main highway. And then I would say that's like the nicest part of Galveston is that whole strip. You literally feel like you're driving on the coast. It's a really nice vibe. There's the pleasure pier, you know, you have the beach section. There's a lot to do. So we would, I would recommend it. I think I kind of covered everything that I wanted to talk about. I know that I talked a lot, but I just kind of want to share our experience recap of our stay here because we stayed here for, you know, three weeks is a long time. And we've, it's just been such a relaxing, relaxing time enjoying the sun. Kids loved it, but they also want a pool. So they're really excited the next place has like a pool. We have a lot of jellyfish. Yeah, they're called Portuguese Man O' War. There was a lot of them. Thank you to Sid for being so flexible with us. He's been honestly so great. He said he's the owner of the RV campground. So I'm gonna walk a bit with Josiah and then I gotta head back because my husband's awake, everybody's awake. I just wanted to do like a little recap. And then we're gonna pack up and go. We're packing up, getting ready to go, but my husband's a little bummed that the bikes rusted out a little bit. Even though we had a cover on them, we were here for only three weeks. I guess the mist, the salt water, and I can only imagine how the RV and truck are doing. But this is where we store our bikes. It's just the best method for storing the bikes and then the back cover. It becomes a patio, which I'll, let me show you guys right now. So this is the nice thing about having a garage in the back. It becomes like a little patio with these doors. So a really nice room. You just rarely open it. This section's all good. I'm about ready to close the slides. Usually just make sure nothing's like where the slides would be closing. I usually sweep under. The nice thing about uh, packing up is that you get like a pretty decent clean in, clean in. You can like vacuum everything. So that's a good thing. Let me put in our little pin. I got this sent to me from Trip Map World before we even started traveling. Um, so we started here in New York, Central New York. We went to a few parks near the Adirondacks, like Lake George, Old Forge. Traveled our way down through Pennsylvania, Ohio, hit Kentucky for the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri. This is where we had a little mishap, where we basically got stuck. This was Mark Twain National Forest. Visited family in, near Springfield, and then we stayed in Branson Landing. Here we stayed for like three months, probably more, but it was really, really nice. We had such great family time during the holidays. Went down to Arkansas, tip of Texas, and went through near Dallas, visited Stephen Lawson's church, and then we went down, made a pit stop before hitting up Galveston. So this is Galveston right here. Sorry if it's not the best quality. And then this is Galveston Island, and then this is the Bolivar Peninsula. So we're closer near, here's Winnie, where I was talking about where they have um, the laundry, the grocery store, and you can either go all the way around to Galveston, or you can take the ferry, and you can pass the channel. So I don't know what we're going to do today, because the next spot we're staying at is closer to Houston. I think we might just go around. Uh, it'll save time, especially with the ferry sometimes, you never know. But let me put in our little pin. I would say we are probably somewhere here-ish, closer to... I would say like the wildlife review reserve but yeah made it to the gulf of texas and that's where we have been in our travels so far 